All right, now that you know how to load data in Python via pandas, and you know how to do that using different data sources, as you saw CSV, JSON, text files, and Excel, and now you want to understand how and learn how to manipulate these data frames. And by manipulation, what I mean is uh, deleting rows and columns from your data frame and adding new rows and columns and also modifying ex existing rows and columns. So that's what you're going to learn throughout these uh, lectures. Uh, but first of all, I'd like you to understand how data frames are indexed. And with indexing, I mean, you know, uh, we have this data frame here. And this can be a big one, so this happens to be a shorter one with only six rows. But if you have big data frames with lots of columns and rows, uh, then you may want to extract information out of the data frame. And to extract information, you need to have like a coordinate system uh, in that data frame, like an embedded coordinate system. So that if you want to access, let's say, uh, from here and 15 to, and then uh, maybe this all other uh, por portion, so these two rows here, this portion in here, uh, you want to know how to do that. So that's what you're going to learn now, how data frames are indexed and how you can slice them. So let's try to extract that portion of the data frame. Uh, let me create some empty lines here. I don't want to confuse you with that data frame, so we're working on this one. And yeah, df7, and what you want to apply now, there might be different ways to access that portion of the data frame. The first way is to use label-based indexing, uh, the other way is to use position-based indexing. So your data frame uh, has column labels and index labels. So these uh, 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 are index labels, and these are column labels. Now, these, uh, the index label, in our case, it's a bit confusing because it normally it can be text, such as, let's say, in our data frame, the address is a unique uh, column which you can use as an identifier. So, if you want, you can set this as an index address, execute, and now you see that uh, this is in bold. So, the first column is in bold, meaning that this is index column of your data frame. So now you can use labels from your index column and labels for from your header, your column names, to access portions of your data frame. Uh, just be careful though, because uh, with this, this operation that we just did here, you know, if you print df7 now, df7, you'll see that you still have the old index column in there, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 5. The reason to that is mm, this uh, set index method, as many other math methods in, in pandas, is not an in place operator, uh, meaning that all this will do it, it will spit out an updated data frame, but it will not store that data frame in your variable. So the variable, the data frame, remains the same. It just prints out a new data frame on the fly, just for, for printing purposes. So, what you want to do uh, to store that is you create a variable which can be the same variable as, as this if you don't if you just want to update your variable but it can also be another vari variable like df8 i'll just want to update the existing variable like that and that will not uh, print out any output so you want to do that manually like this uh, so now when you print df7 you see that df7 is updated with this address column as an index of the data frame. So be careful with in place uh, operations. You know, you can see that uh, df dot set index a question mark to ask for he uh, for help. Oh, sorry, uh, it should be df7 set index. And you can see that you have this in place parameter there uh, that is set to false by default. So, which means you can uh, also pass in place uh, after this and set it to true. Uh, that will update the existing data frame without the need to save the data frame to a new variable. But I would recommend that, uh, you know, just get used to creating new variables when you apply methods to your existing variables, existing data frames. And it should be good to go. Uh, 
doing that and yeah let's get back to our original purpose now which was to access to slice this portion of the data frame and we'll first do it using label indexing with label indexing you want to use lock in there so the lock method and then you pass square brackets in there and then that gets two elements and the first element could be a range of the index column so we're, we're talking about labels about strings so you have to pass you know 735 dolores st and then uh, a range so with a column there 332 heel st and then from country to id execute that and yeah this is our portion so when you use labels you're including the first label that you pass there and the last one as well so everything between those and um, like here country and employees is included as well but id uh, also and of course similarly almost similarly you can access uh, you know single cells from your data frame just like that so the intersection between this uh, index label and uh, this column name is USA, uh, which should be this one here. If you want all the USAs, then you just pass everything there and you get everything here. Which, of course, if you want, you can uh, convert it to a list. So a simple list using the Python built in function, uh, which is list. And that's about label-based indexing. Now, this is not the common way to access, to extract data from the data frame. Uh, more common could be to access a data based on indexing, not based on uh, uh, labels. So uh, to do that, uh, you do df7, and instead of lock, you do ilock. That again expects two items. So the first would be the range of your indexes. Actually, let me uh, print out the data frame here so that you can refer to that. Uh, so let me access from Dolores to the 23rd Street. And that would be one, two, three, I believe, yeah. And also from country to ID, so again, one, two, three. And yeah, you can see the difference now. Uh, you know, the ID wasn't included there and either was 23rd Street, because this is, as, as you do with lists, this is upper bound exclusive. So with Python list, three is not included in the, in the slice. But with labels, that the last item of the range was included in the slice so in this case you want to pass four there and four there and that's how you you get your portion and of course similarly you can do things like that so you get all the rows or only one of them so that would be a row with index three which is this one but only four columns con country employees and id so usa 10 and 4 oh right that is position-based indexing. Now we have one more very useful uh, kind of indexing, and that is combined indexing. So uh, in certain scenarios, you might need to access a portion of rows uh, without having to pass names for the rows. So you want to access rows based on, on indexing, uh, based on their position. But on the other hand, you don't want to access uh, columns based on positions. You want to access like uh, certain columns so which name you know about. So you don't want to count the column. And here comes in handy the ix method. So that allows you to enter a combination of indexes and labels. So that will return you the row with index 3 and the column with the label name. So you get Ben's shop. And you cannot do this neither with iLock nor with lock. That's why iX exists there. And of course you can put two positions if you like. So name would be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and you get the same output Ben's shop. 
Which brings us to the point that if you want, you can always use IX and forget about ILOC and LOC. Uh, but uh, IX is not recommended over ILOC and LOC. So these are more explicit. And it, it they will avoid errors sometimes when you do position-based indexing. So uh, I also suggest you use ILOC and LOC whenever you can. And then switch to IX when you want to do these kinds of combinations between labels and positions. And yeah, that's what I wanted to teach you about uh, data frame indexing and slicing. And I'll talk to you in the next lecture uh, where you'll be learning how to delete columns and rows from a data frame. See you there.